Yo, what's up, y'all? Good morning. It's the Buff Missionary. Just woke up. You can hear it in my voice. You can see it in my hair. But yo, we out here. Gonna get into another video here and just an insight that I got combining a few of the events from the last couple days. But before we get into that, as always, like, subscribe, share, hit the bell so you don't miss any future videos or any of these vlogs. Or just if you have an interest in following my journey in spiritual things and, and my relationship and experience with God. Uh, so thank you. Appreciate that. And I want to jump right in and give you a little bit of context. So uh, regarding my family and the situation, things are interesting as always. Uh, my mom's been home now for a couple weeks and things, I can't say that they've changed all that much from how they had been before. Maybe not as uh, animated, but still some of the same things are there. And at least for me, it ends up raising some questions uh, that I had been really struggling with trying to find an answer to. So I was on the phone talking with my dad and uh, we, we were able to catch up for a little bit a couple days ago, just talking about how he's adjusting and uh, the experience for him, talking about my brother and siblings and you know, just reaching out to everyone, trying to figure out how things were going. But the odd thing was, in terms of just talking about it amongst the family, that's that's kind of normal. Uh, I have shared about this here in a video form, but I don't necessarily go like around to every group of people that I physically see and like, hey, guess what's going on at home? Like, I'll I'll be more general and say, hey, pray for my mom, pray for family, things like that. Uh, unless directly asked about it. If people show concern and they want to know, then I'll do that. And that's what happened yesterday. So I was with a really good friend of mine. We were in Chicago and they had something going on with St. Patrick's Day. We had no idea. So I decided to keep the flow going with this green background. <laughs> they dyed the river green and all that kind of stuff. So it was cool to see that. But anyhow, we ended up getting some food and uh, finding a place to chill and eat. And I asked her a question. I said, uh, what's, what's your greatest fear? We were going back and forth talking about a bunch of different stuff, uh, learning, learning different things and so on. And she responded and, and then turned the question back onto me. And I don't know, for some reason, uh, this is one of those questions that, and I'm sure you've been there before, you ask the question and you're looking for an answer because you want to learn more about the person and so on. but you don't expect it or you're not really prepared for it to get turned back on to you. <laughs> this was one of those questions. And I had to sit there and think about it like, you know, what am I what am I scared of? What am I afraid of? And I was able to kind of share there a little bit about how I actually feel about things going on at home, the questions that I had, the things I was talking about with my siblings and my dad from a couple days ago. And this time it was more reflective. I was getting to process it out loud, to hear it. And I can't lie, at the moment where I actually expressed the thought, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second, uh, I almost, I, I felt like uh, I was going to cry for a second, for a second there, all right? It was, it was for a quick second, all right? <laughs> but I, I explained it like this. You know, the big question that I had really been wondering is when you deal with the mind, when you deal with something that's going through a lot of trauma, a, a lot of uh, a struggle, a, a, a great struggle, and there's this kind of roller coaster with it, you know, you have the high points when things are more or less coherent, you can have good conversations, uh, you can dialogue with that person that you love you feel like they're there even if they might not feel to a hundred percent there's still something there someone there you can connect with right but in the state of where the the mental issues really take over like it's it's kind of crazy because the, the mind is a powerful thing the the mentality that where the struggle is it views me, my brother, and my sister as if we don't exist. So, you know, you go from one side of things, being able to relate to uh, your mother 
and having a conversation and having a relationship there. And then you go to this other extreme where because of the struggles that that person is going through uh, mentally, you, you literally don't exist in that reality. And it's not even the point of like, we don't exist, but it's actually that we're all like dead. And I don't, I don't know how that works because I don't know enough about how the mind works. And I definitely don't understand or know all the different struggles at all that somebody could be going through. But it's tough because, you know, to avoid going into a long kind of story about this, but that, that belief or that mindset about me and my siblings poses a lot of issues when it comes to trying to relate back to my mom in, in, in that mental state because of some of the other things that kind of come along with the mental state. So it really puts us in a position where our hands are tied and there's, there's not a good outcome that can come from us reaching out because of those other things. So again, going back to this roller coaster and these two divergent extremes of mentality, and I'm, I'm sitting here thinking as I'm talking with my dad, I was like, you know, man, I got a, I got a question for you. When, when we're considering the mind and how it works and how things may break down, how, how long does something need to go? How far does something go before the person that you once knew is no longer there? You know what I mean? Like, to, to get that glimpse of the person you knew and the person that you're used to loving, that, that person only shows up every so often. The majority of the times I talked with my dad about it, it's like, I don't know if it's, if it's between like a 60-40 or a 70-30 in favor of uh, us having to deal with the mental struggle side of things versus actually getting to uh, appreciate the relationship and the person that is my mom. But it, it's becoming harder and harder over time to see her there. Like, I know who she is. Like, don't, don't get it twisted. I know exactly who she is. I know the things that she's done for me. I know the things that I appreciate from her. I know the things that I've learned from her. But because of the struggle that's going on inside the mind, sometimes that person becomes harder to see and to recognize in what we're able to see right now. And it's tough if any of you out there have any relatives or family that are going through a mental health struggle, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And, you know, I, I can't even really say I'm upset for myself or feeling down on myself because I know there are so many other people who have to deal with the same struggle as well. I am not here talking about this because I have the grand answer or the solution to the problem. I don't. All right. I'm talking about it because I realize there's something about the way that I relate to this and the, and the way that I relate to God that's connected. And I want to be open and sharing my struggle and my experience with you. Uh, if it can be a, a blessing to God and a benefit to you as you may be going through something similar. So that was the question. Like, how how far do things go before it's like the person that we we know and and that we love is is gone and it's it essentially comes down to being forgotten it's like and and my me and my my siblings are we are we destined to have to be around and in the same existence as our mom, and yet for her not to know that we are alive and, and care about her, is, is that what our fate is in this situation? I don't know. I don't know. But I told my friend yesterday, like, that that's my greatest fear, is to see my mom, to know everything that I do about her and the things that I care about and, and love about her and to think that she has no idea that we're alive, that I'm alive and that we care. Forgotten. We don't exist anymore. You know, I had 
a bit of that on my mind, obviously. <laughs> that's that's kind of heavy. I had a bit of that on my mind as uh, we continued through the day out there and coming back. And this morning I get up and I jumped into the Word, reading the Bible. And again, we're going through this this funny experience where I started in Isaiah 55 and I'm reading through the book backwards. Didn't even start at the very end of the, the book. 55 was just kind of arbitrary, but it's been really cool to see how even reading through backwards, I'm finding things that are matching up with the experience as I need them in real time. So I'm gonna share with you what I read this morning combined with something else that happened yesterday just to give you kind of how I've been able to find peace in this moment. So I made it back reading through Isaiah 33 today and the the subheading for the chapter is called a prayer in deep distress. It matches. It matches. <laughs> and the thing I love about this Remnant Study Bible, once again, you see it here. Go ahead and get you one if you're looking for a Bible with some more insight. I like it. They have these segments in them that are taken from the, the, the spirit of inspiration. So this one right here has a quote that's from the Great Controversy, which you wouldn't normally expect, maybe, I don't know, when you're looking at a chapter that's talking about a prayer in deep distress. But the big heading right on the box here, and I'll show it to you, it says, God doesn't forget his people. God doesn't forget his people. In the same moment, not even 24 hours after I'm expressing my greatest fears being forgotten, uh, in the mind of my mom, I see this here. And I'm like, oh shoot, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta see what's going on here. So I'll read through it, and when I get to the end, I'll talk a little bit more on it. it. Says, as the decree issued by the various rulers of Christendom against commandment keepers shall withdraw the protection of government and abandon them to those who desire their destruction, the people of God will flee from the cities and villages and associate together in companies, dwelling in the most desolate and solitary places. Many will find refuge in the strongholds in the mountains. Like Christians of the Piedmont valleys, they will make the high places of the earth their sanctuaries and will thank God for the munitions of rocks. But many of all the nations and of all classes, high and low, rich and poor, black and white, will be cast into the most unjust and cruel bondage. The beloved of God passed weary days, bound in chains, shut in by prison bars, sentenced to be slain, some apparently left to die of starvation in dark and loathsome dungeons. No human ear is open to hear their moans. No human hand is ready to lend them help. This first part obviously is talking more towards the end of time, but when you look at what people are going through, this isn't something that people have never experienced through time before. You and your personal experience might be going through something that matches the language that's happening here and you're looking for help you're looking for deliverance you're wondering have we been forgotten that's what you're wondering it continues with this question will the lord forget his people in this trying hour that is the question we get stuck there because a lot of times what we do it makes it feel like god has forgotten us and we view the things and the trials of our experience through this lens of, man, God, don't you care? Where are you at, man? Come through, I need you. I don't feel you right now. Where are you? And we, we put that on him, but the question stands, does God forget his people? Well, <laughs> if we read through the rest of the Bible and the rest of the spiritual experience, we might have a better answer to that question. It says, did he forget faithful Noah when judgment, judgments were visited upon the antediluvian world? Did he forget Lot when the fire came down from heaven to consume the cities of the plains? Did he forget Joseph surrounded by the idolaters in Egypt? Did he forget Elijah when the oath of Jezebel threatened him with the fate of the prophets of Baal? Did he forget Jeremiah in the dark and dismal pit of his prison house? Did he forget the three worthies in the fiery furnace or Daniel in the den of lions? Time after time after time, story after story after story, incredible event after incredible event after incredible event, strange circumstance after strange circumstance after strange circumstance, God has not forgotten his people. He was there. He was there and he came through for them in a way that proved not just to them as an individual, but to the people around them that, yeah, oh yeah, he's here. And he's got something for you. 
He's here and he has something for you. He has not forgotten. Last part here says, Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. The question follows, can a woman forget her sucking child that she would not have compassion upon the son of her womb? Wow. You talk about a verse that right now is hitting right to the core. That's what it feels like for me. <laughs> That's what it feels like for my brother and my sister. But the verse concludes with this. Yeah, they may forget. But I will not forget you. <laughs> I will not forget you. Behold, I have graven you on the, upon the palms of my hands. I don't know anything about how the mind works yet. I'll talk about that in, in another video. I don't understand what goes on in the minds of people who have these mental health struggles. I don't know what it's like for them to see out upon the faces of those that they used to recognize. And now they, they view them as nobody. I don't know about any of that, but I do know that God has not forgotten me. He hasn't forgotten us. He hasn't forgotten you. And there's hope there. There's hope there. <laughs> I asked my friend yesterday what her favorite Bible verse was. And she told me Ephesians 1.11. That, that was her favorite verse of choice at the time. <laughs> Though she said she wanted to get a new one. <laughs> but she returned the question again, what was mine? And I said, well, without a doubt, Isaiah 40 verses 28 or 27 to, to 31. And oddly enough now, because of how much I've recited it in Portuguese, I actually know it more accurately and more completely in Portuguese than I do in English. But <laughs> where, where is this real quick? I want to share with you just the beginning part that stands out so much to me. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my just claim is passed over by my God? How often do we feel that in the midst of our struggle, in the midst of our trial, we feel like God is not watching us, that he can't see our path. He, he's completely unaware of where we are going. We, we have things that we believe are coming our way that are justly due us and yet it's not happening and we're wondering why and we put that on God as if he doesn't care, as if he's not there, as if he's forgotten us. Verse 28, have you not known? Have you not heard? <laughs> the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In the times where we forget that God never forgets us, in the times that we think that our struggles are so great that it must be an indicator that the Spirit of God is not with us, in a time where the fears that we have about our lives and our existence are so strong that it, it seeks to cripple us and break us down. Don't forget who God is. Don't forget the power that he has. Don't forget that he created this whole thing. He created you and me, and he has the ability to do something, and that he never forgets you. He's there. Trust in him. Believe in him. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that you'll always feel immediately better right away. But what I can say is the odds of me feeling better are much better by trusting in him than trying to trust in myself. I will take those chances. So believe in God, believe in the power that he has, and believe that he hasn't forgotten you because that's the truth. I'll end this right there. I've been talking for long enough. If you got something from it, let me know. Drop a little something in the comments or a like, subscribe, share, and hit the bell. <laughs> but until next time, this is Buff Missionary. We out here and we out.
Peace.